There we are. XB1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. Here we are at the Mojave Air and Spaceport. My name's Mike Bannister. I was formerly British Airways chief pilot for Concorde, flying supersonic aircraft at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, for 22 years. And I'm delighted to be here today for Boom Supersonic at this really historic moment when the XB1 goes faster than the speed of sound for the very first time. It'll be the first civil aircraft to break the sound barrier since Concorde. So today in the airplane we have Tristan Geppetto Brandenburg. Uh, he's a former naval test pilot, um, obviously was an operational pilot for a long period of time, has a tremendous amount of experience flying both fast jets and uh, doing flight test programs. The two chase aircraft uh, today, they're, they're really just airborne support for Geppetto, uh, helping offload any tasks that are required, keeping eyeballs on the outside of the airplane, uh, if we have something like an oil leak or something, Chase can see it immediately. So. The Mach 0.1 and then the airspeed that you see there in knots, uh, that it, it's reading right now is having speed because the instrument actually has a minimum amount of, uh, you know, basically pressure that it can detect. So it always holds just a residual value of approximately 65 knots or Mach 0.1. As the aircraft accelerates, you'll start to see those numbers tick up. You know, Mach 1 is the speed of sound, so every tenth of a Mach is 10% uh, of the speed of sound. So let's take advantage of this and just watch XB1 on her takeoff rule as she leaps into the air for the first ever supersonic flight of an independently developed civilian supersonic aircraft. She's airborne. The, the initial phase of the mission here, you know, the first card in our test cards here is take off and climb out. The whole function of this is to get into the correct airspace at the right speed and the right altitude to really set us up for entry into the supersonic corridor. As XB-1 is climbing up through 22,000 feet, mark 0.79, 79% of the speed of sound, which is around about the cruise speed of a conventional airliner, 477 knots, that's true airspeed, of course. So the figure in the middle is the really key one today, 0.81, 81% of the speed of sound. The engines do not like supersonic airflow. They're fundamentally, they're just not really happy with it. And so what you, the, the reason that the inlets are shaped the way they are and the way you see this on, on common on fighter jets and other supersonic aircraft is they actually develop and control these shocks, these supersonic, uh, you know, the, the, the shocks that slow the air from supersonic to subsonic to slow air inside the inlet uh, and to provide the air, the engine with subsonic speeds, even though the aircraft is traveling supersonically. So that's one of the design features. How are we getting these wonderful photographs? In our Chase T-38 today, we actually were using a Starlink mini antenna that we've paired with uh, a, an aviation data plan. Uh, and it's, it's just pretty incredible. It's such a diminutive little device that's been able to, we've, we've done some testing uh, in the T-38. And basically we're getting broadband speeds, um, you know, at point, uh, 88 eight Mach, uh, 31,000 feet. That's what's enabling these live shots of XB-1 in the air as it prepares to go supersonic. And we can see XB-1 and the chase in the turn now, looping around towards the area which where we can go supersonic. Your go for Excel to Mach 1.1. Go for Excel, Castro Gate. Castro Gate, go for Excel. So this is the really exciting part. Watch the Mach number in the middle of the screen. Space one, full gate. Three engines and afterburner. Mach numbers ticking up. There so we are. Yeah. XB1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. Control We've got confirmation from the control room that it, she is supersonic. What a wonderful achievement. Geppetto and the whole team know what a really historic moment this is. 
the first civil aircraft Control. independently constructed that has ever flown supersonic. And Geppetto is the first pilot ever to do it. It is really thrilling moment. Control, and we can see her right now watching it. We saw the Mach number lingering there a little bit. It kind of paused at 0.97. We actually expected that. We talked about that in this morning's brief, uh, how sometimes the air data doesn't really know what to do with that onset of the shock wave when it actually hits Mach 1. But then it, it came back. It, uh, we saw 0.04, I think, was the first indication. But here we are at Mach 1, 1.1. Uh, 1. 1. Airplane looks great, and they're into testing. Flying supersonically, what the, what's the experience like? Well, from my experience on Concord, there's absolutely no physical sensation once you're supersonic. There's also no physical sensation of going through the sound barrier. When a plane's traveling at faster than the speed of sound, and today it's up around about 770 miles per hour, you really don't realize it. And yet, today, for instance, uh, XB1 is traveling so quickly that a distance like that between, say, San Diego, and San Diego and Los Angeles could be covered in just a mere 10 minutes. She's actually far, flying faster than the Earth rotates. She's going so quickly that, that the sun is going literally backwards in the sky. It's quite an amazing experience. So and kind of two for the price of one, really. Two supersonic flights for the price of one. And just to see the team, they're absolutely thrilled we can see here. And there we are, supersonic again. Knock it off, knock it off, knock it off. Just going through the sound barrier, pop up to Mount 1.1, and then she'll probably come back down to route back towards the west and, and back towards home by routing over Edwards Air Force Base and then back to Mojave, Sierra, and Spaceport. So. Uh, Nick, she's come back down through uh, back to subsonic speeds. What happens next? Yeah, so this was a contingency that we talked about this morning. If we weren't able to get all of those test points done in one supersonic run, we were we were planning on doing a, a second one to try to capture all that data that we would like to capture on condition supersonic. Uh, so that, I think that's what they just executed there um, to get those last test points. Uh, I, I actually say it looks like we're in AB at Mach 0.96 uh, and 34,000 feet. This is, is an indication to me that we are going supersonic again once more oh. uh, on the uh, heading to the southwest uh, back into that corridor. So very much along the same line of, as our uh, first supersonic run. The, an indication to supersonic. <laughs> we are now <laughs> supersonic three times on this flight, um, which is quite uh, unbelievable. Um, and, and it's great. We have the fuel for it. Um, so we're out there, and again, the, the, the objective here is to get the data, and that's, what, uh, and that's what the team's doing. Three complete, next up is card four, recovery and return to base. You know, XP one much like the Concorde, when flying on approach uh, at slow speeds, they're very nose high, even though they're descending. So that nose is sort of in the way and blocks the runway. So we actually have two cameras on the, on the nose gear, so when the gear come down, the pilot will have the use of these cameras. Basically, if, if, if Geppetto on approach could see through the airplane, he would naturally be looking down through his multifunction display, and that's where the camera displays. And so he is actually flying on a video Test screen. And I guess it won't be long until we see the gear coming Test down. Roll, stand by gear. Here it yep, comes. There it is. So that's the mark for Geppetto to select the undercarriage down. Here she comes. And we'll get verification from both Geppetto and the control room here. Mark, dampers on, fuel systems auto, anti-skids auto, 170. That's the landing control. checklist that they just completed. Yep. Air glide slope, you're on, center line. On glide slope, on center line. On glide slope, on center line, 50 feet. On center line, 40. On center line, 30. 20, 10, 5, 3. And she's down right on the numbers. Absolutely beautiful. Right on the numbers, right on the center line. And I'm going to turn around and watch her <laughs> roll out down the <laughs> runway. A drone flying past the aircraft to give really good views of the whole aircraft. And I think I actually caught a smile there from Geppetto at that very moment. <laughs> And there's that moment. I don't know if you can hear me on the mic, but uh, Geppetto just stepped out of the cockpit, uh, getting that hero shot there, coming down the ramp. And our CEO, Blake Scholl, is about to meet Geppetto uh, and shake hands uh, after a successful mission. She was real happy supersonic, and that's the best, that's the best she's ever flown with supersonic.
congratulations and well done thank you thank you